Hello, good evening and welcome to The Majority Show, uh, broadcast every Wednesday live at 7pm. I'm your host, Mark Devlin, and this is Scotland's number one anti-nationalist show. I'm here tonight uh, with uh, my co-hosts, uh, David Griffiths and Mary Devlin. Um, we've got a lot to cover tonight. What have you got for us? Well, tonight I'll be reporting on Scotland's housing crisis and how the SNP are once again meddling in a market they don't understand. And tonight I will be talking about Nicola Sturgeon's Supreme Court shenanigans. And we'll all, all be talking about Nicola Sturgeon's hate. Is it good for Scotland or is it good for anything? Indeed. And if we have time, I will be taking apart another of the big nationalist lies. And of course, we have Zoomer of the Week. Yes, all that and much more in just a few seconds. Right, welcome back to the majority show. As you know, Scotland's number one anti-nationalist show. Um, as usual, we start off with a huge shout out to our donors. They, you, that's you, many of you watching the show, um, who have helped this show set up and who continue to fund it. Um, says here, we love you all. Well, that's true. Okay, if you would like to help us, please uh, join them and uh, make a donation to the show. Every donation, big or small, helps us amplify your voice against toxic nationalism. And in fact, your donations also not fulfilled. They powered our recent billboard campaign, which we will talk about in a moment. And you can also buy a T-shirt or mug from our store, all at reasonable prices, and a little bit of the sale from each one helps to support the show. As you can see, this beautiful mug here, and T-shirt too. There we go. Beautiful. beautiful. Yes, beautiful stuff. <laughs> Indeed. So we would also, as always, like to thank our friends at UK Union Voice and at Unite, United Against Separation for supporting the show by letting us broadcast directly to their Facebook pages from where I know many of you are watching right now. Right, and of course, we, we ask us every week, please do remember to subscribe on YouTube um, so you can get alerts. If you're watching this on Twitter, you can't join the chat. Uh, if you're watching Facebook, you can chat, but we really we need to get our YouTube numbers up. We're over 500 now, which is pretty good. We need to get up to 1,000. That would really help. If you can, after the show or even during the show, open another window and go to our YouTube channel to subscribe there. Indeed. So and wherever you are, please like, share, comment, tell friends, extend our reach, all at the click of one button. And as usual, I will be managing the comments tonight, which is probably why you'll see me squinting here and there, um, as well as my co-hosting. So please, tonight, keep your comments short. I'll try to get as many of them up as I can. Thank you. And those comments are already coming in. Coming up, we are going to have uh, David is going to be talking about the Supreme Court. Mary is going to be talking about Scotland's housing crisis. And I'll be talking about hate and does it do anyone any good we'll be back in a second right so first of all we have a short update about our billboard campaign which launched yesterday no monday um and that was we are running five billboards three in Glasgow and two in Edinburgh and uh, they were all funded by donors like yourselves who contributed to our Destroy the Pretendy Ref campaign. So uh, let me see, I'd like to thank everyone of course who donated and you can still donate to that campaign uh, if you'd like to do that. We have links. Go to our website and on there there's a, an article about the, the the billboard campaign and in there you can you, there's a link where you can donate. I'll show you this little video that I took just the other day to show you what the actual billboards look like in place. Thank you to all the donors who made this possible. Stop wasting our time and money, Nicola. Bring your pretend you're focus on our health, education, drug deaths and 
pe issues that people actually care about. If you'd like to keep donating and putting more billboards up, please go to our website and donate now. Thank you. Right, um, let's go to that. Okay, so uh, that's quite good. Uh, 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 congratulations to the cameraman person, yep. Mary, who took that wee video mm -hmm. there. Um, so as I said, if you'd like to <laughs> help with this this uh, billboard campaign, please do uh, join in. Uh, you can donate, uh, or you can, even if you're not up for donating or if you're already donated, you please share our social media posts, of which there are many out and about. Um, so, uh, other than that, we will get on with the show. Um, so, right, we all know that um, Nicola hates the Tories, but this week she added to it by saying on live TV that she detests them and all they stand for. Now, give me a second to get this up here. Uh, let me see Where that source. Let's go. So, we'll get get this. Let's get this video up of her talking about it. All right, here we go. Would you rather have as Prime Minister? Well, that's not a difficult question. I mean, if the question to me is, would I prefer a Labour government over a Tory government? I, I detest the Tories and everything they stand for. So it's not difficult to answer that question. Uh, so so yes, you, guys, you want to see Chris Starmer you know, in? Yes, well, um, somewhat unsurprising, perhaps, comment from Nicola Sturgeon there. Most decent people, I think, would surely balk at the idea that 25% of the voters anywhere from whatever party should be detested. But Sturgeon has managed, with the help of a compliant media, to project her childhood, childhood hatred of Margaret Thatcher into hatred of every Tory in Scotland. What's your immediate reaction to that, David? Well, to me, these were appallingly ill-judged sentiments. Mm. Uh, to me, it's criminally irresponsible incitement, nothing less, and particularly so in the very week of the anniversary of the murder of a Conservative MP, David Amos. To me, this is just unforgivable stuff from Sturgeon, and it's yet another illustration, as far as I'm concerned, of her lack, her appalling lack of political instinct. Alex Salmon would never have been caught saying anything wrong. It's not in a hundred years. Dreadful. Unforgivable. Mary, have you any thoughts on that? I think it's extremely unbecoming of our First Minister yeah. to be saying something like that about 25% of the population. Yeah. Um, I think it, it, she's, you know, she's she's down at the gutter level instead of being in, in an elevated position that she should be in. Great. Yeah. But obviously, yeah. it just it shows her for what she is, and I'm, that's the kind of um, comments that we're getting here. Uh, let her carry on. It will show the, the people the true Miss Sturgeon, and she hates everyone who disagrees with her. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's kind of, of course, it's kind of, she wasn't really hating the Tories when her family bought her council house, one has right. to say. That's one thing. I mean, it's one of these things that hates it's hate when it suits her. And when it suits her, I think, is, you know, to build up grievance uh, against, well, in this case, Tories, but really, and many other people have said, well, if you're, if you're Labour, you're just a red Tory to them yeah, as right. well. Yeah. So there's, I mean, it's just this idea that any politician should be going out saying, I hate those. I hate those people. It's surely a sense of the sense of responsibility Absolutely. in your in, in the position that you hold, irrespective of your personal feelings. That's surely that's what pol politics is supposed to be about. One can only imagine what would happen if uh, Liz Truss said she, you know, hated uh, everyone in the SNP, right? Or, or nationalists. Now we don't hate nationalists. We pity them generally, or we mock them, you know, and so on. But we don't we don't hate them. We think that they, as people, they can. They can be redeemed. Let's put it that way. Well, uh, Heavenly yeah. Malbec has just brought up the exact same comment. It says, can you imagine if Douglas Ross had said he detests the SNP, there would yeah. have been a meltdown? Yes, yeah. of course. I mean, that's that's definitely uh, true. But I think that, you know, one of the things I think about it is that many people think this is a slip up or a revealing mistake. But, you know, I think that it's actually something she felt that she had to say. Whether she planned it or more likely it subconsciously came out because it, she she felt it. And the reason she felt it was not because she hates the Tories, I think, but because she's scared of Labour. That's what it comes down to. So the if you believe the recent polls, Labour are in the rise, 33% in some, say in some cases, and poised to take many seats off of even the SNP in uh, Scotland. And, yeah. of course, the rise isn't isn't the problem. It's the trajectory 
that's the, the the challenge. Where will it end up? Will it end up with Labour at thirty three percent, or will, could it even go higher? And if it does so, especially in Scotland, then Nicola Sturgeon is in big trouble. What she really does? Don't you think, David? She really doesn't want a Labour government. A hundred percent. A Labour government in Westminster takes away the SNP's raise on debt, really, because they're all about the SNP has, has become popular and has become successful through being the party of government in Westminster and acting as if they're in opposition to the dreaded Tories in uh, West, in, in Holyrood, rather, and uh, acting as if they're in the, um, uh, if they're the party of opposition instead because there's a, way, a, a conservative government in Westminster. Sorry, I put that really badly, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so this is perfect situation for her. Now, if Labour come along and spoil that all, that's when you see the, the SNP really the beginning of the end, because without a, 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 a conservative government in Westminster, for whom the SNP can blame everything, there really is no point in voting SNP. And particularly, as I've said before, the um, the momentum which is necessary for a Labour government to uh, to be formed and to win an election, that momentum could very easily sweep the entire nation very easily. And you know what? This is what happens in the, in the UK uh, elections. It happened after the fifties, after what Harold Wilson called thirteen years of Tory misrule, famously. Then it happened again in the nineties, after eighteen years of Conservative governments. It always happens. The Conservative government seems impregnable for a time, then eventually shoots itself in the foot a bit, and Labour sweep to power. Now that will only happen with Scottish voters voting Labour rather than SNP, and Sturgeon knows that better than anybody. That's why she's doing this, and I think you're entirely right. There was some um, deliberation in her, her choosing to be we're the party that hates Tories. It's like I, I said about the joke that Aberdeen fans sing to Celtic, we hate Rangers more than you. And this is just effectively, that's what she's saying, where we hate Tories more than you. That's all it is. That's what, that's all yes, it is. yes, I think that's, that's that the way. point. I mean, yeah. there really is there only really is room for one anti-Tory party in Absolutely. Scotland. Right, and yep. the SNP were able to capitalise on the decline of the Blair government, yep. and also were able to successfully paint Labour uh, as working with the Tories against Scottish right. independence, that's uh, right. whether that's true or not. So, um, yeah, so this space has become a bit crowded, perhaps maybe too crowded for Nicola Sturgeon's liking. You know, um, uh, so. The last thing she wants is them to come back. We discussed right. last week, many people will go over to Labour if they feel maybe they're on the winning side or if, you know, one, there's, is that, of course, is that, I'll move over because I want to be on the winning side and say I voted for the winning side. But Funny. the other part is, you know, more and more people are realising that um, with no chance of a referendum, that the SNP's astonishingly poor governance comes to light, right? And if they can't form a government in Westminster, how can you get rid of the Tories? And the only way to do that is to vote Labour. They've been going out all week saying, well, you know, vote SNP to, um, to put, so that Labour can get in power. But the, all the Labour people are like, well, why don't you just vote for us? Yes. Right. It's pretty ridiculous. So she's then, and this is the cynical part about it. I think she's doing this so that she can. She she she's actually, if she's successful in her plan, then she'll stop Labour getting into power. Yeah. Right. So then it will be what exactly what she wants, which will be the Tories again, dreaded Tories. At, oh, another four years or five years of Tory government. Um, versus uh, our uh, SNP, and she can still she still won't be able to get any a referendum. So we're going to be stuck in this. If this, that happens, we'll be stuck in five more years of that, instead of actually having a Labour government and things changing for whatever some people may say, good or bad. Who knows what would actually happen there? Yeah. Um, so what do you think of that? Uh, well, I yeah. think the SNP must be terrified of a Labour government because yeah. that pretty much would be the end of them, wouldn't it? Indeed. Yeah, I mean, and also I think the, the Labour can come out and say, well, we're actually the true socialists here and we're into pulling and sharing of resources across the entire UK, not drawing an imaginary line and taking all the good stuff for ourselves. I had an argument, yet another one with a guy who was claiming, one, first he was claiming that the uh, SNP were um, social democrats and and, not, and were not nationalists at all. And then oh. he was, <laughs> and he was trying to claim he was a socialist. It's like, no, no, mate. Who did you vote for? Oh, he didn't want to tell me. I oh, eventually got out from him. Or said, did you vote for a nationalist party? He said no. And then it turns out he voted for the SNP because he doesn't consider them nationalists and doesn't consider himself a nationalist. At a certain point, people are going to wake up and say, no, 
you know, Labour are the actual you know socialist party in the UK, and that's right. that's what we should be. They should people should be voting for. Now, a final part in this, um, I think it was quite good to see that Labour didn't uh, fall into Sturgeon's trap. It's very easy to say, when Sturgeon says, well, I hate the Tories, then for someone in Labour to say, well, we hate the Tories more. We're the, we're the ones who do that most. But I think most ordinary voters are not, are turned off by this kind of hate yeah. and, and the use of it. Uh, cynically to try and build your support. So I think if Labour did that, they would lose a lot of people. And now we've seen what's happened with, say, maybe Angela Arena, I'm not actually sure, can't remember exactly, calling people scum and so on. Yeah. And that, that type of level of discourse has to come, come down, I think has to, has to, you know, come back. It has to end. It has to, it has to end. It's not, it's not good. As you say, David, it's in the anniversary of um, the murder of mm-hmm. David Ames, right? Yeah. And and it's too easy for people. She's whipped up all this grievance. Too easy for people then to go, you know, Westminster and the Tories are denying us stuff. Yeah. And then whatever, you know, um, yeah. we get comments all the time. You're a bunch of fascists and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, and then, the, you know, people are like, well, of course we're going to kill, you know, kill or whatever. We're going to attack fascists, you know. And then it leads to a very dark, somewhat a dark place. Very dark place indeed. You're right. It has to be avoided. Just getting a few comments here that people don't seem to trust Starmer, though, so he's going to have to work on people a little oh, bit more, I think, to get their trust. Absolutely. They'll have to help their game significantly because, yeah, as I've said in the show before, only Harold Wilson and Tony Blair <laughs> in, uh, of, of, and since the Second World War have won elections for the Labour Party, and some of the no-hopers they've had as party leaders in the recent past, no wonder. But Starmer, he doesn't have the charisma at the moment, and he doesn't have the sure-footedness either. I don't know if you saw my PMQs today. Oh, it was terrible. Starmer against Truss. <clears throat> Trust me, it's not exactly... We heard some of it, yeah. Oh, it's dreadful. I mean, they're just both so lacking in any kind of, like, sparkle. Terrible, terrible stuff. So, no, they're yes. not talking about it significantly. Well, here's a question someone's asked. But what if there's a hung parliament? Well, then, that in a lot of ways, that's the nightmare because that's when, particularly if, if Labour is the largest party, that's when you know backdoor deals are going to be done. There's no question with the SNP, with the Greens, if they win any more in England, that is not the Scottish pretending Greens, and maybe with the Lib Dems. So you will get this suggestion of a progressive alliance again. That's what would happen, whereas nobody would do an alliance with the Conservative Party other than possibly the Yeah, Green. but I mean, I think they've made it very clear that they're not going to enter into coalitions and so not on. Coalitions. They've made it Indeed, very but... clear that they're not going to uh, offer an F 2 and so on. And I suppose that's the thing that has to be held. Now, whether the people in Scottish Labour who are, who have very successfully pushed this policy into the UK Labour over the past few months uh, can still withhold that line uh, in that situation. But the bet uh, is, a, is a, something we have, would have to see, and I think they, they would because there's no, what's the point in winning if you then break up the country? What's the point right. of that? Not to say that, you, that we would lose, but what's the point of going through all that again? So the, the, the key point there is... I suppose that we have to, you know, people have to, if they want a Labour government, they have to vote for Labour, right? And if they want, uh, they ha- that's that's the thing, that, and the majority has to be substantial in that case. Well, the polls certainly seem to indicate that. So we will see um, how it turns out over the next few months. I think there's still a couple of years to go, right? Until the next... Two years, uh, indeed. Yep, has to be called within two years. Right, it has to be called within two years. Is is that the fixed term thing, or is that they get rid it, of that? Well, certainly the fact that, I mean, the, 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 the last election took place in November 2019, so you have to, you can only get five years, so they've they can, they've got to call it uh, right. before <laughs> the, that, that month dawns. If, you can't have an election campaign in only a couple of weeks, so oh, yeah, something like that, yeah. Oh, oh, thank you, Rita, that's very kind of you. I'm not, not feeling great, but, you know, I'm soldiering on like that. Bravely, boy, I am. Right, okay, coming up, uh, Dave's going to talk about the Supreme Court, and after that, Mary will be talking about the housing crisis that the SNP Greens have foisted upon us. If you are watching the show and you like what you see, like a little bit of our chat, and hopefully some insights here and there, then please do uh, subscribe to us, uh, or tell your friends, or do something, um, share, whatever you can, everything helps. And we'll be back in just a second. Right, so up next is David is going to be talking a little about this week's uh, shenanigans, well, uh, whatever, yeah. 
in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, indeed, the highest court in the land. So, the Supreme Court pretendy ref ruling. Here is my very, very quick summary of what's happened so far because we've got a lot to discuss tonight. Now, bear in mind the purpose of the case, the reason we're at the Supreme Court, is to establish whether the Scottish government can legislate for an independence referendum. Can they bring a bill to Holyrood? Is pretty much the nub of this. Yesterday, Scotland's Lord Advocate, Dorothy Bain, Lord Dorothy, uh, presented the case for the Scottish Government. And the Scottish Government's case, in essence, is that the pretendy ref would only be advisory and there would effectively be no more than a nationwide opinion poll, be completely harmless, could not possibly lead to any suggestion that the UK must break up or that it moves us any closer to uh, independence. So uh, this was her genuine claim. This is what the Lord Advocate is saying. No, 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 it's nothing. It's just a, just a little civic joyous pretendy ref. It's just ludicrous. So, I mean, I don't know if we want to talk about the pretendy ref itself now, but this is, of course, what we're talking about in the Supreme Court ruling. But as far as I'm concerned, you know that the SNP government, if this re referendum ever took place, and if it was won by means of you know a, a, a everybody voting, or whether it was won by boy, the pro UK people boycotting it, they would trumpet it from day one that that was a cast iron mandate for them to immediately uh, take moves to, to to break up the UK into an in Scottish independence. So hopefully the Supreme Court will see it in law for what it is, which is just a con job. So that's how I see certainly yesterday. So well, I mean, I think the thing that has to be really impressed upon nationalists, yeah. and there's so many of them in at the moment, they get, you know, they just thrive on any glimmer of hope, right? But there yeah. is actually no hope here, right? There is, it's, it's a no-hope situation for us, a lose-lose. It doesn't matter how much they try and spin it, it's just, it is a lose-lose. First of yeah. all, the Supreme Court can send it back there's three options, right? Supreme Court can send it back saying, why didn't you pass a bill first in your own parliament? And why didn't the law officer, Dorothy Bain, why didn't you say it was lawful or not? The whole reason they're doing this shenanigans right now is because she won't say that it's lawful, right? That's, that's, that's basically what it's about. So they're trying to offload whether it's lawful or not onto the, the, the Supreme Court judges. Yeah. And they, I don't think they're going to, they like that. And Pretty much, we could see from the way the the UK lawyer was dealing yep. with it. Yeah, Jim, right. I'll talk about that shortly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But you're okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, but then so then the second option is that they say, "All right, um, we'll make the decision for you, and it is lawful for you to run this advisory referendum." But here's the thing: it's an advisory referendum. The Lord Advocate has gone gone to the court saying it's not bind, not legally binding. And the UK right. government doesn't have to do anything about it, right? So, what's the point then? So, what's the point? They could just run an opinion poll, but we'll put that mm -hmm. to the side, right? So, all these all, all these nationals have come up in, the, in, in in on Twitter, like, oh, but you know, Brexit and uh, the 2014 referendum were were uh, advisory too. You know, this whole thing, every referendum is advisory. But the big difference was that they were agreed beforehand all sides agreed we can't settle this issue so we're yeah. going to have a referendum to let the people decide the thing in this case is we already had a referendum and let the people decide and the, the people who won don't want to have another one and a re because they won right Absolutely. we won and the, this is this whole thing is about the losers mm. trying to dictate the terms of uh, the contest and you're like wait a minute you you lost like if you if you know if the football team afterwards they lose two to you know two two nil and they come back on and say well we actually you know we want another another go at it it just doesn't work that way That's right not. and then they try some legal stuff to say oh well we should have got a penalty there and we should have done this and that and you're like no no that's not the way this game works mm -hmm. actually but the problem is that they they've built up this whole grievance right yeah, and so and that's why the third way, of course, is if they, uh, um, the third way is if they uh, put the, uh, they they say no. Of course, there's no 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 no. Yeah, that could be. Right? Yeah, right. So um, so basically, there's, there's no hope. Even if they run an advisory referendum, it's an advisory referendum that has no legal standing. UK will ignore. UK government will ignore it, and we, the majority of Scots, and mm. us as part of the people who. Uh, representing them will actively boycott it, and then it will be worthless. So it's just a yeah. just a glorified opinion poll that they're they're fighting so hard just to get a glorified opinion poll. That's useless. So it's Quite. pitiful. It's actually it, very. It's pitiful. It is uh, to me. It's the same. I mean, uh, if we just 
can conclude what, what Bain was saying. It, it literally was that. It was saying, you know, there's nothing to worry about. No, there, there, nothing will happen as a result of this, really. I mean, I don't know why we're even having this fuss. I'm just I'm just asking you, just let us do this. Go on. It's, it's like a, a flagrant abuse of the Supreme Court system to me. Now, James E. the King's Council, KC, as they're now called, of course, today presented the case for the UK government, and he was he used masterly understatement, really, Mr. Eady. He talked about Ms. Bain's comments yesterday in which she actually said that she she admitted that she's not con convinced that presentation of a referendum bill in Holyrood is within the competence, which means the ability, not ra or rather the, um, are they allowed to do it rather than are they capable of doing it? It's an in <laughs> interesting to use the word competence in terms of the yes, Scottish government, which is, of course, <laughs> incompetent. Anyway, as Mr. Eady said, the lack of competence is not too difficult to discern. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with legal speak, that is like saying, of course it's not within the competence of the Scottish Government to present a bill on a reserved matter in a devolved legislature. That barely uh, needs saying. That is clearly right. If the Supreme Court sees it another way, well, I think the, uh, the balls, uh, the balls bust as this thing goes. Anyway, he went on to point out that the Supreme Court allowing the pretend ref would lead to a situation where the Scottish Government could routinely present cases to the Supreme Court, as he called it, willy-nilly. Now, this is a point I've made previously on the show. If the Scottish government is told, yep, you can present a bill on a, on a reserve matter to Holyrood and you can go about starting to break up the UK, what's the stop them presenting a bill on, for example, abolition of the monarchy or uh, opening up immigration in Scotland or maybe removing nuclear weapons from the Clyde? None of these things are within their power to do. But if this Supreme Court ruling goes the way of the Scottish government, there is nothing whatever stopping the Scottish government to then start protect, uh, presenting bills on these other reserved matters. So I can't see on a point of law how they can possibly allow this. Now, Ms. Bain, of course, was furious at Mr. Eady for saying this, and she actually called it so unfair. Oh, yes. Didn't. So uh, I think okay, we've got, got, we've got a, yeah, we've got a clip of her actually uh, do it, saying that. Here it is, here. What people in this world? Ah, yes, they take advantage because they're big and I'm little. But it's an injustice, it is. Oh, well, <laughs> was that the right one? No, I'm not too sure if that was the right oh, one. I there. Know, I think, I think well, that that's was exactly how it went. Be. It was very like her, yeah, indeed. Yeah. It sounded like it. <laughs> yeah. I think that definitely is. But she, 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 poor, poor Miss Bain stopped just short of telling Mr. Reedy that he's not her friend today. But believe me, I can tell you she was tempted. So, um, yeah, so that's 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 it for now. Effectively, what happens now is the judges, five of them, as I believe, um, they go off and they go through the, uh, this mountain of evidence and paperwork that's been accumulated. And it will take them, as they've said, possibly some months. We might not get an answer on this until next year, given that it's now pretty much the middle of October. So don't expect yes. us a, a, a definite answer on this anytime soon. Anyway, more to come in weeks and months to come. Right there. Yeah, I think one thing it's very important to understand here um, is that Nicola Sturgeon is not trying to uh, claim powers that are being denied to her by Westminster. The, no. She is trying to grab powers that she is not entitled to. She's yeah. not some plucky upstart trying to fight against a, 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 you know, a system that's, that's you know, wrong. The system was right, and she's trying to do something that's wrong. This is the difference. And I think we have to be, always be aware of that. And that's how, actually, nationalist leaders through all time have always worked, always tried to grab more powers than they're entitled to. We can think of many examples in history. This is just but one more. Um, as you say, the S, so it's up to us to be aware of what's actually going on here and actually yeah. to try and, and to try and be a breakwater against this upcoming grievance, oh, that Westminster denied us, oh, the Tories denied us, or something like that. No, actually, it's you know, it's not like that. Um, basically, you're not being denied. You're not. You're trying to get something you're not entitled to, and that it, it was those rules, the Scotland Act and so on, were set by Scots, yeah. right? And two devolution and, and two uh, referendums, the devil, original devolution settlement. Uh, referendum, and then in 2014 again, where they said the Scottish Parliament has limited powers, yeah, and you cannot, as a, if you want to be elected to the Scottish Parliament, these are the these are the limits of your powers. You cannot go off and saying, you know, we want a referendum on, uh, well, we can say it, but you won't mm. get it. 
Right, exactly. we want a referendum on Scottish independence. Right, okay, good discussion there. Moving, we will be moving on in a few moments. Uh, Mary will be up with a chat about housing crisis and how it affects us all and how awful the Greens are. But all that in a second. Right. Okay, so Scotland is in the middle of a housing crisis and once again the SNP and the Green Scottish Government are meddling in a market they don't understand and they're making the crisis worse. The Scottish Government has vowed to to build 110,000 affordable homes in the next 10 years to address the chronic housing shortage and 70% of those would be used for social housing, so that's renting. So that's an average of about 11,000 homes a year. But last year, they only produced 9,757 homes, which is about 11% under target. So that's kind of where we are. So it was really disappointing and sad to hear this week that Lord Hawhey announced that he is shelving his plans to invest a billion pounds building 11,000 affordable homes in Scotland, which would have met 10% of the target because of the spiralling cost of bricks and the green man, Patrick Harvey's rent freeze bill. Now, I'm sure we could all see this coming from a mile off. Uh, Last Thursday, Holyrood passed controversial legislation that will freeze rents and ban evictions for most tenants for at least six months and potentially even up to 18 months. So landlords won't be allowed to put rents up at all, even if their rent costs are going up. Mm -hmm. So if their mortgage rates are going up, right? If their maintenance costs, repair costs, insurance even. So at the moment we know it's for six months, but it might be 18 months. And landlords can't evict you if you don't pay your rent. So guess what's happening, guys? Many landlords have have concluded it's just not worth the bother anymore. And they're selling their buy-to-lets in droves. And builders like Lord Hawhey, who won't build meaning significantly less houses and flats to rent to the public and private rental sector. And the jo- and jobs are being lost through this as well from the, la- the lack of building. So this is just another perfect example of how the incompetent, naive SNP and Greens, the Sc- Scottish government sticks its nose into a market it doesn't understand and makes the crisis that much worse. So, David, I know you're a landlord and you have some yeah. rental properties. What, what do you think of this new legislation? Well, um, to me, it's farcical, uh, literally farcical. Uh, what we do, so people know, um, we, as, as a business, we provide low cost, mainly flat rental for people, uh, mainly in the, in fact, exclusively in the industry at the moment, for people who are not in a position to buy their own place. We charge such low rents, and this is not a joke. Many of our tenants, when they hear the rent, say, is that it? Is that all? We have 100 quid less than anyone else is charging. So we do this deliberately because it's, 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 to us, it's trying to give something back as well as, you know, a sound investment. I won't lie, we do it for an investment purpose. But we also provide houses and dwelling places for people. This idea that Scots landlords are all opportunistic, idea, um, um, uh, grasping Rachman type figures is utter nonsense. We do what we do because almost every dep- every town in Scotland which has got um, any areas which are like deprived has empty properties. And it, conversely, every town is in, in Ayrshire that we see has a lengthy list of people who need housing. Now, as I've said privately, we often face issues like vermin, for example, vermin infestations. I had to uh, start a fire in the shared by garden last week because there are rats nesting in there. The council won't come out and get rid of them. We've got to do it ourselves. But we only want one flat in the area. You'll regularly see rats running across the road. So if people like us pull out of this, it's only going to make it worse. So you've got um, the, the, the idea that you can't increase rent is farcical for a start. Secondly, what, what if somebody doesn't pay the rent? You're just supposed to say, fair enough, if that's what the Scottish mm-hmm. government says, no problem. Of course, people will stop buying houses. And what will happen as a result of that? Yet more um, empty properties and yet longer lists of people looking for someone to live. So as far as I'm concerned, this is classic whack-a-mole SNP tactical decision making on the hoof. They make one decision here by hacking, whacking down a mole, four other moles spring up elsewhere and they desperately try and hit each one of them in turn as well. Laughable. We've seen this, as we've said, we've seen this with the shipyards, with the ferries, etc. Now it's the same with the nationalised rail service, which is now on strike. How's that for the SNP talking about their competence to govern? At their own conference, they have to finish up early so people could get home because the nationalised rail service is on strike. Laughable, absolutely dreadful, as always. 
And also, if you remember, they're um, putting up taxes when they actually brought in less tax revenue. It seems that everything they stick their head into just it goes the opposite. Well, they, I they, think even that, if yeah. they say they have good intentions, it always yeah. ends up doing the opposite of what they said. Well, was. I think so what's so interesting yeah. from what David said there, and I hadn't heard this before, is it's a cycle. It's a whole cycle, right? It's yeah. you know a landlord. Like you yourself, David, you see a yep. you see a property in a in an area where you could actually improve the property, and yep. you can you can get tenants in there for a reasonable amount. Of course, no one is going to ever go into a place that is unreasonably priced, right? You people, it's That's a right. market, and then um, so gradually improving and so on. But what by sticking their thumb on that on on the on the, on the scale, basically they've they've made all these other effects happen, and so people. Thinking about, I saw there was another housing association said that they were going, going to stop or people were investing in real estate in Scotland are going to say, no, I will invest somewhere else because we can't be sure of what's going to happen because these government rules are just made. And it's important to notice, I think, as well, that this uh, this rule was brought in or this law was brought in under emergency legislation, which yeah. was only supposed to be for COVID, right? Or for right. Right. So it's I mean, if they're going to use emergency legislation to destroy the market, which was perhaps one of their aims, then, you know, that's just really not on at all. Well, here we've already got we've got Jane Cook, who says I'm a landlord and my tenant has decided to stop paying his rent. Nothing we can do about it. And the other thing is, we don't know how long this is going to be. I mean, they've said six months, but they may extend it 12 months, 18 months. Yes. So it's a terrible situation. Yep. That's the, the whole point of emergency legislation, maybe they can just say, oh, it's still an emergency, so sorry, guys. Yeah, they just keep it going. Well, yeah. another um, effect of this uh, meddling in, in the markets, um, I don't know if you've, if you've heard much about it, but there is a real housing crisis going on this year for university students. Yes. yes. And it's all over Scotland. It's uh, Glasgow University, all the universities in Glasgow, mm-hmm. St Andrews, Dundee, Aberdeen, everywhere. Students have been unable to find accommodation to start their courses. They're sleeping in bunk beds in common rooms and anywhere a bed can fit if they are lucky. So we're hearing in the news today that um, students are calling estate agents, begging them to rent to them, offering up to six months rent in advance. And they're ready to sign leases without even seeing the place. We've got hundreds that are applying for a single property. So a lot of students are not able to take up their places at university because yeah. it's come time and they don't have anywhere to live. So it's, uh, it's a terrible yeah. situation because they're, they're going to lose, they could potentially lose their SAS funding. If that, if they lose a year of their SAS funding um, because they've already, you know, they've claimed it, um, but they can't use it, then that might be them. Yeah. It's a terrible situation. I mean, when we were looking, I think we mentioned this in the, in the show last week or a few weeks ago, when we were looking for an apartment not that long ago uh, in the West End, there were literally, you know, tw- at least 20 people looking for each one. And it's much, much worse now. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's literally hundreds of people like queuing up around a building or calling estate agents trying to just get to see the place. And people are saying, I don't need to see it. I'll just take it anyway, even, you know, sight unseen, which the landlord, which the agents aren't allowed to do. It's it's against the law. Um, But that's how desperate people are. So it's it's really bad. I remember university um, accommodation being very, very short supply when I was at uni 42 years ago. You know, when I came back back to Glasgow to go to uni, it was bad then. But now there is absolutely no comparison. You've got people are being phoned up by uh, course tutors and uh, 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 what do you call them? The admissions officers saying, look, if you can't find somewhere to live, we're going to have to cancel your um, application to the uni. How on mm-hmm. earth can you do that? Like, you can't mess around with people's education like that. These are no, you know, it's the absolutely awful. These are these young people's lives. Dreadful. It's, effect, it's affecting you know the young people's lives, and okay. you know the, the government are always talking about oh young people and their mental health. It's like yeah. you know how is this affecting their mental health? It's absolutely ridiculous. I know that even our daughter, she's at um, St Andrews, but there's a lot of people there who have to stay in Dundee. And if they're lucky to find a place in Dundee, they're staying in Dundee yeah. and they're commuting. There was even a girl today I read about who is in Ireland. She flies over once a week. So she's tr- she's lined up all her classes on the same day and she flies yeah. in the night before, stays in a hotel and then goes to all the classes in the same day and then has to fly back to <laughs> okay. Ireland again. Well, that's, that's quite something. Mm. That's such a bizarre distortion yeah, of what the whole thing is. 
think it's shocking, really. Um, I mean, of course, it's the Greens. They don't know anything about anything. They come in, they come, they go to university, they go straight into un- they go straight into politics. They've got no real life experience. They haven't worked yeah. in a business. They haven't under- un- understanding how business systems work. They don't have any idea of any of the sectors at all. And True. then they, they can they can make these. They go, oh, here's a great idea. And they, they do it, and it's not a great idea because you know you can't just put your thumb in the scale and expect everything everything else falls off. Uh, to use a make it a metaphor, I mean, of it. that's that's I mean, the way. Kate, it goes. Kate well, McTaggart was the very, uh, so I was going to say, Kate asked a very pertinent question here. Um, people in benefit serve their rents paid it's paid directly to the tenant. Can they just pocket the money and not not pass it on? Trust me, Kate. Not only can they, they do. So what we've had to do now. Is we've had to say to people who are on universal credit, of course you can stay with us, but the payment has to be made directly to us because this is just um, overt encouragement f- to people who are being paid to stay somewhere to take the money and spend it on something. And guess what they're going to spend it on if they're sitting in the house all day in universal credit and they don't have to pay their landlord? Have a guess what that's going to be. Money's going to be spent on. I'll give you a clue. It's not going to be on croquet lessons, that's for sure. So it's just typical, typical SNP utter sheer incompetence laughable it would be laughable if it wasn't serious. yeah if it wasn't so desperate um yeah. lord hohu i was talking about the who who is not investing his one billion pounds in eleven thousand houses at the moment yeah. he said he put the, the blame squarely on patrick harvey he says patrick harvey will go down in history as the man who stopped investment and added to the calamitous lack of housing that we have in scotland there you go Oh, that's terrible. Good segment there, Mary. Thank you very much for that. Um, we're going to go off now, and we're going to have a very quick section yes. from David about yeah. the big lies here now. Yeah. Okay, here is this is a moment here. I made this amazing. Um, oh, thing. you don't have a new graphic, do yes, you, Mark? Uh, yes, just, just for you. Right, ready? Let's see. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so guys, I'll read this quickly because it's a very easy one to deconstruct. This week's big SNP lie is the claim that an independent Scotland would immediately rejoin the EU. Now, this is a total fabrication on several levels. Firstly, Scotland has never been an EU member, so Scotland That's can't right. rejoin. <laughs> Indeed, Scotland enjoyed EU membership as part of the UK, and the UK, of course, left. And that was in 2016 after the Brexit referendum. Now, secondly, when the SNP campaigned for Scottish independence in 2014, they did so in the certain knowledge that independence would lead to Scotland's immediate exit from the EU on day one of independence, literally. Okay. Day one. Although, yep, Swinney tried to deny it. Andrew Neil made a complete idiot of himself. As it so happened, the, the EU subsequently had to say, yes, actually, you would be out. Now, thirdly, this idea that they could, Scotland could just sail straight in. Since before the Scottish independence referendum, which was, what, eight years ago, there has been and still remains a group of countries which have already submitted applications to the EU for membership. Now, those countries, some of those countries are Serbia, North Macedonia, Montenegro, Albania and Turkey. Plus, of course, this year, Moldova and Ukraine have now applied. Now, of all of those countries, albeit Ukraine and Moldova have been latter day, of all the countries which had applied and submitted for membership prior to 2014, not one of them has joined. Yet we are told repeatedly by nationalists that Scotland would just go straight in, bypassing any other states which have applied, being excused from meeting very stringent EU economic entry criteria, none of which Scotland meets or could do in any of our lifetime. Now, it's possible that as a big thumbing of the nose to the UK, the EU could relax all of its entry rules just to help. No, no, it can't do that. It just can't do that. It's, It's theoretically possible they could do it, but then again, it's also theoretically possible that the Rangers will win the European and Champions League this year and the Albion Rovers will win the Scottish Cup. It could happen, but it's not going to. So the point is not... Well, I don't even think it... Uh, to be honest, David, I don't think it could happen because they've got uh, the, 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 the acquis or whatever they're called, the, the yes, rules for, jo- the right for joining. Those rules are set in stone and they can't go to one country and say, well, we'll give you preferred status because you used to be part of the UK. Well, they've got countries like, we'll be wait- we've been waiting for 14 years. Or exactly. Years for you know, so, what, and we've, 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 we've got all these conditions today. We're not letting that bunch away with it. And then they'll tell all their friends in the community and say, you know, it's just what, a veto. Uh, it's yeah. nonsense. There's no way. It's, it's not, there's no hope. You're right. you're right. I mean, the EU being the EU, they, it is potential. It's possible that they could just scrap all the laws just to make a case, or just to make a, a, a stab at the UK for being having the, the, the impertinence to leave. Mm. They're not going to. We all know they're not going to. Mm. And of course, 
in any event, Scotland isn't going to join the EU because the, city, the, the situation won't arise, mainly because, well, partly the EU doesn't want a basket case like Scotland, and secondly, Scottish independence isn't going to happen because there's no path to it. So, always good to have the opportunity to contextualise and to dismantle these very absurd, transparent, separatist lies. So, keep out watching for this regular feature on the show. More next week, guys. Well, there's a lot of... Um, um a lot of uh, discussion about this, of course, on the internet. And we there's a guy called Bingo Demagogue yes. uh, on Twitter, and uh, he or she, I don't know who it is, uh, does a lot of uh, really good, has done a lot of really good research into that. They've got a paper all about it. Uh, I advise you to look that up. It's Bingo Demagogue. Um, and they've got quite a few really good articles on uh on the whole spot, the whole um, the kind of these type of issues, can the EU, can Scotland get back into the EU? Does is there really a claim of right? All this type of stuff. Yeah. So I think that's good. And one of the things is to say, I think that there are quite a few people in uh, quite a lot of people in our community uh, to who do create great work and try and use them and give uh, get, uh, uh, try and. Uh, direct people to them yeah. as much as we can. Uh, I think we mentioned it the other day that we are looking into doing some fact, more fact-checking work. Uh, I think there's a, there's a demand really? for it. People people need it. People need not more than just fact-checking, but here's the facts, and then how do we fight back as well? Yes. Say, you know, because it's just tedious. It's so tedious. You have people on there, like, for example, I mentioned earlier, people who were, who say, yeah, but it's advisory. And you know, and then they all come up. Oh, like you know, come up. Well, let's advise, 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 advise. And you're like, what? Well, you know, if I'm seeing twenty of them, how many of them are there out there that are just saying this advisory thing? How can we stop that and say, well, that's yeah. not going to work. It's just not going to work. And we, I think there is some responsibility we talked about before in the larger media to try and say this is not working. And I've actually been quite surprised to see some of that actually people saying mm, it's advisory. Uh, in the larger media. Anyway, so slight off to the side there. Coming up, we have the highlight of the week. It is the Zoomer of the Week. Yay. Right. Okay. Mine is actually fairly straightforward, although I didn't write much about it. So Every second, go over the page here. Right, it's the hapless Dorothy Bain. Uh, we talked about her earlier. Um, she's been tasked by Sturgeon to try and defend the indefensible. I mean, she doesn't. Re she really looks as though she doesn't want to be there. She yeah. sounds defeated already. Yeah. Um, she's upset. We saw the Calamero clip earlier on. It's an injustice. This is. Why Why is the world doing this to me? All this kind of stuff. And you're like, well, why is why, why are you there? Why did you take this job? I wonder. Why, why did you do that when you knew that the number one question that was going to be asked was, can we have a referendum? Right? It's the, and then the first thing you do is say, all right, I'll have a wee look at the Scotland Act then. All right. And then two minutes later, because it's straight there in black and white, and it's not difficult to figure out, yeah. Says, no, I'm sorry, you can't have a referendum. Well, Nurse Sturgeon says, can you come up with some kind of scheme that kind of uh, will get us around this? He goes, well, okay. Not really realising that she'll be up in front of the Supreme Court making some kind of scheme that make, makes her laughing stock across the entire legal community in the UK. So... So Heavenly Malbec is asking, I've not seen Dorothy Bain before. Is that her usual style of presentation? <laughs> I, I thought... I thought she was very underwhelming, wasn't she? Yes, yes. I mean, she wouldn't make a very good salesperson. Uh, she's there's no transfer of enthusiasm going on there at all. No. Um, yeah, she's, quite she looks like she's reading prepared script which she doesn't believe. That's what she looks uh, like. To me. Mm. Um, she's yeah. very unconvincing. Oh, hold on a second. Indeed. Oh, I've got my, this thing happened last time I tried to open this. Right, so uh, anyway, I'm stuck here, so I can't actually see my own screen. Um, I was hoping that we'd maybe to get, get through this uh, this show without a technical hitch. So um, so anyway, that's my Zoomer of the week uh, for the moment. And um, Okay, David is up next. Yeah, David's going to be up next. Yep. I'll be back properly in a second. Uh, properly in a second. I'm just, 
Just have to get a window out of the way. Okay, are we getting a Zoomer of the Week, Mark? No, I can't yeah. press the button. No, we'll press okay. it. No, okay. we'll press so, the no problem, so David can start. <laughs> yeah, David, just you start. Unfortunately, I'm going to be a bit big. <coughs> okay, no. so this week, I had planned to make a joint nomination of Hamza Youssef and James Dornan for their very blatant hypocrisy in refusing to condemn the Ireland women's football team's sectarian song celebration at Hamden last night particularly when you remember how quick both men were to condemn a certain Glasgow football team whose players play in blue shirts. Yeah. Uh, a completely fake video of similar singing was posted. Both men couldn't get onto Twitter fast enough. This time, didn't say a word. Did you see the, the, these celebrations last night, Mark? Well, yes, I did see that. And, you know, it's like, because the first thing I ever think of when I win a sporting, ter- sporting tournament, I can't even get that out, is to... Praise a bunch of terrorists. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the first thing right. I do. Yeah, when you open, yeah, there everyone, we go. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, when it comes to your head, of course. Yeah. So I, 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 shocking, I just shocking behaviour. I mean, this is the thing about this t- level of discourse. Where people think right. that this type of thing, saying people they, they hate other people. I mean, these terrorists and, and yeah. so on are actual bad people, and they've yeah, been praised. Yeah. While people who are ordinary Tories, you know, whether they uh, just ordinary people. Yep. That's what they are. Your, your brothers, sisters, um, your family members, colleagues, uh, people all around you, your neighbours. They're exactly. the Tories that she says they detest. That's just that really is, not right. I couldn't agree more. Well said, indeed. So, I, 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 in fairness, I asked both Hamza and Dorman if they'd like to comment. I told them I was going to be talking about it on the show tonight. I gave them an opportunity to provide a quote. Inexplicably, neither replied. So, fine, okay. But as always, we don't, this is not a football show. We don't, we tend to steer clear of the uh, well, we've football managed to mention it nonetheless. Exactly. So, we give it a mention because it's it's an important point. However, my zero of the week this week is Joanna Cherry following a rather bizarre appearance in Laura Koonsberg's show last Sunday. Joanna spent much of her time on the show assuring viewers that she is once again best friends forever with Nicholas Sturgeon, who was sitting approximately five feet from Joanna at the time. I don't know if she had a revolver pointed at her forehead. I don't know. You couldn't see her um, sturgeon off camera. But she says they're now friends again after an unfortunate fallout as Joanna puts it over women's rights. Well, thanks for that, Joe. We're all mightily relieved, I can tell you. But Miss Cherry went on to demand that the pretend ref must go ahead and that the Conservative government must not be allowed to deny Scots their democratic right. She then went on to illustrate the point by saying, I would just like to ask Brexit voters... How would you have felt following the 2016 Brexit referendum if the EU had sought to overturn or block the result? Well, my guess, Joanna, is Brexit voters would have felt in that instance pretty much exactly the way they felt when they watched furious Remainers in the House of Commons, Anna Subri, John Berko, the Speaker, what a joke, Ian Blackford, and most famously of all, Joanna Cherry doing everything in their power to stop Brexit. So for her yes. lack of self-awareness and for sheer hypocrisy, my Zoom of the Week is Joanna Cherry. Uh, it's just, um, I just don't get this. Uh, Joanna Cherry, she, she, she's, you know, it's, she knows what she knows the law exactly right. She's she not knows. a stupid woman. Not anything. Not even uh, close. No, I think she's. Yeah, I don't know about that entirely. <laughs> to be honest, I mean, you, you can't. You can't. I, I, you know, I've. I, I think that's the first thing you might say. Well, she's a QC, but they're quite clever, stuff like that. Yeah. But no, maybe not really. You know, if you see that performance by Dorothy Bain today, for example, you're like, yeah. really? I know. That's that's the level. Um, you know, I don't. And and is that the best you've got? You know. So I think that's you know, it's perhaps not. Maybe they are. You know, not that clever, really. Mm-hmm. And perhaps, do you think half of Scotland is thinking that they could be a better KC than exactly. Dorothy Bain or? or Keir Starmer, even I don't know. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Well, someone in our, our uh, chat, private chat said that you know if courtrooms are not like Perry Mason, you know, with someone coming in running in at the last minute. Exactly. Yes, I've got the thing that will give you Scottish independence, the yeah. paper, the, the key. That's it. But that's not the way it works. It's Indeed. a whole bunch of papers and boring talk. Although Dorothy Bain certainly is the most boring <laughs> we've, we've seen so far. <laughs> really quite shocking. And Joanna Che for b- boredom um, is not far behind her in the boredom threshold, I have to say. I think these people should be used on insomnia apps. <laughs> the Valium app. That's, that's the val- Valium ads. I was thinking, you know. She says we sleep. Oh, no, I'm not going to say any more than that. If you can't but, sleep, then please yeah. tune yes. in to Dorothy Payne. <laughs> She'll have you sleeping in no time. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. moving on. Uh, where are we got? It's now I'm back here, so we've got these. Emer- uh, 
Right. Okay, so I think I'm in with a good chance of winning this week. All right, okay. mm -hmm. Because my Zimmer of the Week is also backed by the world's number one author, J.K. Rowling. Uh -huh. So this week I saw her, she called out Cameron Downing, a Scottish SNP equalities officer, for his abusive tweets on social media, encouraging and threatening violence towards women, and then for the surgeon enabling him. Cameron said he wanted to beat the F out of TERFs and transphobes. Um, so basically a TERF means, uh, are you ready for it? Trans-exclusionary feminist. It. It's, a it's basically it's a derogatory, derogatory term used against women who don't recognise the gender identity of trans women as women. Um, so we're people like uh, women who, who don't want to call you know men who've tra who have transitioned to female and don't want to call them women so cameron also said that he, uh, he said i effing hate terfs and transphobes with such a passion they make me want to scream so this downing he's an equalities officer for the snp <laughs> equalities officer, equalities <laughs> officer <laughs> right, okay. and you couldn't make this up could you <laughs> equalities <laughs> officer for the snp's london branch um, now, when he was confronted about his Twitter post, he said, I apologize for these tweets and for any offense caused to, and this is of note, to the LGBTQ plus community and have long since deleted them. So why is he only apologizing yeah. to the LGBTQ plus community? What about everyone and all the other women who are not in that well, community it as well? Doesn't care about them. That's the answer that here's exactly here's and JK on on this case. Right. So JK Rowling put up she put some personal blame for this on Nicola Sturgeon. She said, Nicola Sturgeon Scotland, a place where an equalities officer feels free to declare in public how much he wants to beat up non compliant women. So what do you think, guys? <sighs> Well, it's a the first, first of all the whole discussion is is a is a, is a minefield. But one thing we can be sure of is that anyone who threatens to violence against their basically political opponents should not be in an inequalities posi position. Should be in any position. It should be in any position at office. all. No, in any public office at all. And actually, that made me think. Actually, if he's you know Nicola Sturgeon is also the, is the head of a government that has equalities ministers in in it. Why did the Equalities SNP, or the Scottish Government's Equalities Minister, who I presume is an SNP minister, why did they not speak up against Nicola Sturgeon saying that uh, Tories were to be detested? Not, to, not, not the spin on it, which they tried, which was that Tory policies were to be detested, but actual Tories. Anyway, Wait. sorry, I digress. Mm. Um, we've Quite. got that one there. Also, J.K. Rowling has been in the news, of course, all week as well. Um she had wore this uh, T-shirt we have here. I made a meme about it. Nicola Sturgeon's always going on about how much she loves books. And now the world's most famous author is wearing a T-shirt, calling her a destroyer. That must hurt. I am sure it does. Absolutely. I don't, I don't know if, she get in, if Nicola Sturgeon got into it for that, but that's twice in the past week that uh, J.K. Rowling has pulled, pulled her up as well. And as if Nicola Sturgeon wasn't, uh, here's a picture of her with the, with the, the turf basher here, and um, so it's uh, maybe it's not really. She seems to have really pinned her uh, colours to the mast on this uh, trans trans rights issue. A lot of women are very upset about it, of course. Um, I don't know why she's doing that. It just seems a little bit strange. But one of the things that needs whether whether it's something she really believes in or not, she needs yeah. to be. In control of the people who are speaking on her behalf. Absolutely right. Right, guys. So who's who's is David deciding this yeah, week? Yeah, David tonight. Right. Well, I think there were a strong lineup tonight, but I think anybody at this time making threats of violence, be it now or in the past, simply cannot be tolerated. So, as far as I'm concerned, although it's very very tough competition, I'm going to give it to um, Cameron Downing and Mary. Oh, um, well, well, well done, Mary. Well, well done. I'm, I'm glad I brought something to light, but I'm not happy that of, of what he, he's actually won it for. Right. So, that, well, it's just it's disgraceful. <coughs> it's quite shocking yes. to me. I'm not, no, no, it's, it's a very serious point. You should not be saying that stuff. It's just unforgivable. It's dreadful. 
Right, Mary, you have a, a lap of uh, honour there. Very good. Well done for you. Thank um, you. But as you say, as you know, this this level of discourse is not not that great. And I think actually one of the things that we've done, to be honest, is to take more start to take more care a little bit about what we say. Now there is uh, we do mock people, as you say, and we do yeah. challenge them. And you know, sometimes it can be easy just to get into a thing of uh, to cross a line. I am generally have had a lot of long experience in social media, but sometimes it does happen. So we have to always be careful in our private interactions and our public interactions as well to do the best we can and not let that hate fester because it just yeah, yeah. gets worse and worse and worse, really. Absolutely. Okay, we will be back uh, with another show next Wednesday, October 19th, our usual time of 7 p.m. Many thanks to all the donors for your support, as always, making the show possible. Thank you so much. Uh, we've got Amy. And thank you to UK Union Voice and United Against Separation and other pages that support us. And thank you to everyone tonight for all your comments. We've had some great comments. Thank you. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would really like you to do that. Um, so Every person, every everyone helps. Right, okay, so I'll leave you with a thought for the week. The biggest obstacle to Sturgeon's plans is not the Supreme Court or Westminster or Tories or Labour. It's you, the majority of Scots who reject our greedy, divisive and hate-filled nationalism. Keep fighting for us. We'll keep fighting for you. We'll see you all next week. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night, everyone. See you next week. Good night. Thank you.